concentrate just about entirely on a full contact type syndrome. Uh, we're going to concentrate mostly on defensive movements and hands, which tends to be the weakness of uh, most of the people in the full contact circuit. Uh, so we're just going to jump from drill to drill to drill to drill. Uh, did anyone not bring any kind of hand pads with you today for chance? If anybody does not have any, put it up, put it up front. I said you won the lottery. There we go. Uh, we'll try to catch you some. Because it's imperative that you have some sort of pad. Uh, we'll be working with partners quite a bit today. Again, anytime anybody's got a question, we're just going to feel free to ask. Uh, this is not a preset seminar like I normally do, where I come in and do warm up drills and then I try to bring up different principles that we're going to work on. Then we work on those principles and then we integrate those principles into a strategic type sparring contact for the conference. I want to just keep it simple and just good old fashioned punching, blocking, moving, and kicking type of sorts. I don't care what everybody or try to take try to take it at an easy pace so we don't get worn out or tired and no one gets injured or anything. Uh, some of the movements that we're going to be working on will be here uh, basically towards the black belts. They'll look a little complicated so far as trying to remember them or trying to execute them exactly as I show them. Uh, let me just talk a little bit. Mike, you want to take part with us today? Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah, Typical highway patrol. They're always lost until it's time to get your ticket. Let me just talk a little bit about full time. a couple of areas where I feel most of us are fairly strong and where I feel most of us are, need some work and then we'll get right into it. Um, basically when you're fighting, use the word full contact. To me there's only one kind of fighting and that is uh, when you're out there fighting you're trying to kill each other. If you're not trying to kill each other, to me you're not really fighting. You're like doing some type of what we call accommodation sport. I'm accommodating you by hitting your target. You hit your target. You hit me, I hit you. I don't call that fighting. All right, now what? Out here you have your kicking maneuvers, your long range type techniques. Offensively, on the offensive side. Uh, there's a number of things people work on. I like to work a lot of times coming in with the uh, shin bone or the top of my foot and banging right underneath the man's kneecap, on the inside of the kneecap. Out here, sort of getting his attention. And then with the shin bone, rip it, sort of a cutting kick up on this little static nerve there, there. So sometimes I'll get his attention here, fast with him in a palm, then come through with my technique. Sometimes I'll come in with an obstruction, catch him on a side kick, catch him about four to six inches below the kneecap. Sometimes right inside this quadricep here, where your internal quadricep and this adductor muscle come down, there's a little nerve ending. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll kick with the toe right inside that. Uh, probably the most predominant kick you see in kickboxing is a circular type kick off of the rear foot. Though most kickboxers stand on an angle like this. My particular style, we like to give your opponent as little center line as possible. Always try to deny your opponent access to the target. So don't give him a target. We like to stand primarily sideways because we concentrate more on the lead leg. Whereas in Thailand, Bangkok, and Burma and so forth, they concentrate more on the rear leg. And you'll see them try to kick the lower part of the leg. They don't hit with the foot necessarily. They like to hit the bone. Bone against that muscle. They'll hit this uh, nerve region up in here, the side of the leg, or go all the way around behind it and hit the hamstring here. Does that make sense, everybody? And if you've got good boxing experience, know nothing about kicking, you're going to get your legs chopped out from under you. One of my favorite moves of a street situation is I like to come in with a side kick and bury it, right? into that lateral quadricep, right dead center here, or hit that hip socket. So I'll be here, I'll fake the man up, get his attention up there, and just bury that side kick right now. Boom! Up. You don't see the side kick a lot in kickboxing. Personally, I don't know why. I think it's just an inadequacy in the way they brought it up overseas. Um, we're not going to be doing much of the kicking today. I don't feel like that's 
uh, our primary weakness. So out here, these are your outside type techniques, and you can kick any other part of the body. Um, then you come in here, you have what you call long range punches. This is where your arm goes all the way out straight. So basically what I mean, these are long range punches. Rich hand, jabs, straight right hands. And in here you have your short range kicks, such as if he's in a stance, I'm going to try to cut up underneath his elbow, what we call a cutting kick, with the shin bone, or hit the outside of his forearm, with the shin bone sort of wear those arms out. Or step to the outside and pick both of his forearms there and try to work that forearm down. Notice I'm not hitting with the foot, but I'm trying to bring that bone up on that forearm to kind of wear those arms down. And sometimes you might trap and throw a short spinning kick on the inside. This is where you have your short range kicks, your long range punches. Then inside here, you have your different ways of firing knees. Also, there's some kickboxes I actually jab with a knee from here. I can't do it, but some of those uh, Asians just have those real flexible hips that can go from here and actually hit you with a, with a knee. Just like you can jab the hand, they can jab the knee. Then in here, you have your different knees. You might need a person inside here, shin against shin. And shoot box, and they have these oblique kicks where they kick with the inside of the foot. Come up, kick the inside of the shin. Look, the rest going on. You get his attention, hit ball, then hit him upstairs. Maybe spin him, then hit him. I like to bump a lot, where I'll get inside and I'll bump with the forearm. I'll spin, bump with the shoulder. I like to paralyze a lot, hitting different parts of the body that aren't necessary. What you call areas that you score points. I'll come in and I'll just punch the sucker on the hip. I'll come in and just punch him on the shoulder. I'll spin him, dig behind the shoulder. Those types of moves. Or I'll throw a hook, I'll grab his arm here, hook his arm, boom, just throw a hook right to that bicep. Little paralyzing type movements. <clears throat> referee will say, break sometime, I'll push off. Come back in, the referee says, break again. As I push, as I push off, I'll let my hand slide off his arm, says, slide, boom, dig that elbow right to that <laughs> anterior deltoid muscle. Sorry, rep, I slipped. What's your name? All right, so there's a number of different paralyzing moves. Different ways of working your knees on the inside. You see a lot of them on the overseas, they're bringing the knees straight up and then bringing it across, sort of a side movement. You see them hooking, trapping the head as they hold here, just drive those hips in, drive those hips in, boom, just drive that knee right up in the solar plexus. Those suckers really, really hurt. So anywhere from knee in here, knee in the midsection, Taking your heel and right on the outside of the leg, it's a little sciatic nerve there. Bring that heel whoom, right into that little sciatic nerve. Or to get in the clinch, you're going to take heel whoom, right behind that hamstring, all right up on the person's kidneys. So there's a number of different paralyzing movements. You just want to be familiar with them so if someone ever fires them at you, uh, you know how to adjust to them. It's not something that's going to catch you off guard. So there's many ways of trapping on the inside, but basically, on the inside, I like to work inside punching maneuvers. Inside punching maneuvers. How to work your punches on the inside, different types of combinations that you work on the inside. There's a few that we're gonna work on today. I'll repeat them for you. Position. I like coming in like a double uppercut. Uppercut, uppercut, straight right hook, or reverse it. Uppercut left, uppercut right, hook back that way. One of my favorites is simply Keeping that shoulder point right at your point, pull that shoulder up, come up and over. A lot of times what I like to do is spin my point. From here, just throw a double hook. Down, search, boom, up, turns back with the right hand. Learning how to maneuver on the inside. So, you've got an outside range, you've got a mid medium range, and you have an inside range. I know it's boring, kind of tedious to do the inside stuff, but that's where I'm going to primarily con uh, concentrate on today. I noticed when these point fighters, people in karate, when they start bridging the gap from point fighting or karate into the kickbox and stuff, they do okay out here. Then they feel a, less, a little less adequate once they get at this range. But notice what I'm doing. There's two defensive perimeters I've got to penetrate. I've got to penetrate his kicking perimeter, does everybody understand what I mean? And I've got to penetrate his punching perimeter. And if you're up against a fighter who throws mostly straight lines at you, like a straight left and straight right hand, you can thread yourself right through those type of punches. The man that's hard to get in on is the man who's throwing these curved line type kicks and the man who's throwing curved line type punches. That's real hard to get through. Hello. <laughs> yes. He's looking for a place to... Uh... <laughs> 
Okay, now, the hardest thing to do in the fight game is, see that gap between the two of us? Bridge that gap, hit your opponent without missing or getting hit. That's the hardest thing in the world to do. We're going to work on that a little bit today. The first principle, the first little basic understanding I want you all to work on today, and whether you're doing shadow fighting, learning new drills, or especially hitting the heavy bag, or working focus pads. Remember these words every time you execute. Fire, cover, maneuver. It's a key to all basic fighting. Most great fighters are great because they have developed what we call incredible basics. And one of the things I notice a lot of kickboxers are not doing today is they fire okay. Some of them, after they fire, they cover adequately. But they fail to maneuver after they fire. Briefly, in a nutshell, before we get into our first drills, for fight score off against you. If I'm, coming in, if I'm coming in with a simple combination, firing, boom, 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 boom. After I fire, I want to cover. Now, after I cover, I've got to maneuver. If he's bigger than me, faster than I am, more experienced than I am, he's got a stronger defense, I can't stand right here in front of him because I'm right in his line of fire. I'm right on his, his firing line. Does that make sense where I'm at? You've got to keep the man busy as long as you're here. So one place I don't want to be is straight in front of him. I want to deny, deny, to deny him any access to that target. So after I fire, cover, I need to maneuver. There's three ways you can maneuver. First way we're going to work on is you can maneuver by relocating the target. Let your hand slip side to side. If he's a good body puncher trying to work the knees, you rotate your body side to side. See what I'm doing? I'm moving the target. Or you can maneuver by breaking ground and switching your position. Anytime you do a counter step, like a little slide step down here, a little stagger step, a little bump step, scatter step, whatever. All of those counter steps, the category of those counter steps are referred to as breaking ground. So that makes sense everybody. Right. So after you fire, cover, break ground as you maneuver. So what I need? Said yield the right away. I'm out of this line of fire. Now from here, in other words, what I've done is I've executed a change up. Now what does he do after I execute a change? He's got to make an adjustment. He starts to make an adjustment. I change back up here. See? So what I mean? So every time you execute, one person is going to try to get set up. After I get set up, he's going to try to make a what? He's 